Hi guys, welcome back for another Rings of Power review. Today we're talking about Season 2, Episode 7. And if there were four words that I could use to sum up this episode, it would be war, war, explosions, war. That was it. The whole episode was a battle. Firstly, before we get into it, I would love to give a huge thank you to the unconditional support that you guys have been giving me. I've received so much love and respect from you. All of your kind comments have brought a smile to my face and have made me chuckle at times as well. And that is the reason why I continue to make these videos. Without these comments, I wouldn't have the motivation and determination to keep filming and uploading these reviews for you. So keep Keep the comments coming, you're only making me want to make more of these videos. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. You all seem like lovely people. <laughs> so episode 7 is the penultimate. Nope. <laughs> episode 7 is the penultimate. Episode 7 is the penultimate. Why can I not say that word? So episode 7 is the penultimate episode of season two, which means that next week is the final. A lot of you will be very glad to hear that it's the final. So the episode starts off with a very sexy shot of Keller Brimbor forging the final ring. He thinks that he is using Mithril, but we all know that that's not just Mithril. Sauron has definitely tainted it somehow. And now we have nine rings. Ooh. This is what the whole of the season has been building up to, rather slowly, might I add. The forging of the Nine Rings, and guess what? They have been a-forged. There's also a shot of a cute little mouse who has immediately become my favourite character. Let's be honest, they have more likability than any of the characters in this show. Jokes aside, this mouse is actually influential because that is one of the main reasons why Celebrimbor realises that he is in an illusion and he is not in reality. This smart cookie realises that the mouse is working on a clockwork pattern and then he also marks a candle to discover that the candle is not burning down. These things are like a glitch in the matrix. Celebrimbor is literally living in the Truman Show right now. Imagine that, living in a world that is fake. What if that is the reality? Where's the proof that it's not? Deep thoughts. I need to address something because we all know on this channel that I am a dummy. I am not the sharpest tool in the toolbox. How did I not realise that the actors who play Hal Brand and Anatar are the same guy? I have spent this entire season thinking that they were played by two completely different actors and I said in my previous review that I missed the guy who played Halbrand. Well guess what? The guy who played Halbrand is the guy who plays Anatar. Did anybody else not realise that or is that just me? And if it wasn't for some of you who informed me that it was the same actor, I still don't think I would have realised. I just don't get how much of a difference a hairstyle can make. It's literally just the hair. There's nothing else about him, he has the same face. I just can't believe how different a person can look if they've got different hair. Because to me, I was looking at side-by-side -side pictures and they still don't look like the same person to me, but they are. So thank you to those of you who told me that it is the same actor, which I believe his name is Charlie Vickers. I never would have known. As you can tell, my IQ is off the scale and not on the good end. So at this point in the episode, Killer Brimbor is still blissfully unaware that the world is in ruin and chaos on his doorstep and he's just living in this happy chappy little bubble where all he needs to do is smith and forge whilst the world is tumbling down around him. So it was kind of cool that the orcs decided to block the river by throwing their big bouldery things at it because that meant that the majority of the battle actually took place on the riverbed which for some reason I just kind of liked. I thought it was cool. Come at me. In this episode, Elrond and Prince Durin are reunited at last. I don't think they've been together at all in this season and I really liked their little duo in season one. That was one of my favourite plot lines. So the fact that they were back together briefly in this episode was nice. And they did agree to team up for the battle. That would have been a great plan if Durin had stuck to his side of the bargain. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but Durin's in my bad books. I was vibing at the orc music. That guy who's on the drums top notch and when the orcs march into the battle that was a pretty cool scene as well now i do have a bit of an issue with this battle i felt like this episode had potential to be the best in the season so far the reason why i've got a little bit of an issue with it is because i just felt like the battle was very uneven there seems to be 
thousands of orcs and then like a few of the elf army. Where are the rest of the elves? Why is barely anybody defending the place? There's like no one around. Like when there's a shot of all the orcs marching in the battleground and then you move on to a shot of the elven archers, there's like no one there. Now we do hear from somebody later on in this episode who says that the orc army have 10 times as many people as the elves do. However, the elf army just looks really sparse. Is this a casting issue? I don't know. It just felt like there's just not enough people. And that's something that I felt like consistently across this whole series is that there just doesn't seem to be enough people in Middle Earth. Where is everybody? Even in like the cities and things, there just doesn't seem to be many people. And I thought that this show had a massive budget. Cast some extras. I would have happily have been one. I could have played an elf. We next get a very gripping scene where Celebrimbo realizes that he is in an illusion. I liked this scene. I liked it. Yes, I have said that I liked something about Rings of Power, okay? I think it's the fact that the environment gets darker. He realizes that his workshop has been trashed. He looks in the mirror and he's weak and unwell. The scene was amazing and it is pure gaslighting at its finest. The fact that Sauron has been able to do all of that and literally create this bubble that Celebrimbo has been in for God knows how long. And then the moment that he realizes it was all fake and when he throws the hammer through the window and all he can hear is the sounds of war. That actor is good. The guy who plays Celebrimbo. He's a good one. The poor bloke literally bursts into tears as he realizes that he's failed himself, he's failed his people, he's failed his mission. He's a big old failure. I do know the feeling. I just wanted to give the dude a hug. And he also realizes in that moment that Anatar is Sauron. Dun dun dun. And then it's very unfortunate timing that Celebrimbo walks out of the door and gets hit by a huge fireball. Everybody thinks that Celebrimbo is crazy when he tries to tell them about Sauron. And then he somehow pushes his apprentice off a wall and she dies. I mean, it was definitely Sauron's influence that did that. But the poor lass dies. It's a shame. I feel like there was not enough character depth to her for me to care. I think the whole purpose of her character was just to display how cruel Sauron was, Sauron was, how cruel Sauron was, and how he is gaslighting and manipulating Celebrimbo and how he is turning everybody against him. I think that was the only purpose of her character. Now that we've got that message and we understand what Sauron's plan is, she can die. There's no point to her anymore. Boom, off you go. Elrond is leading the charge of the elf army. He sees Galadriel over on the orc side and somehow manages to stop every single elf in the middle of charging at the orcs. You're telling me not a single elf stepped over that line to kill an orc, not a single one. They would all just stop face to face with the orc army. I definitely feel like they've tried to over justify how the orcs are comfortable fighting in the sunlight. Because they've tried to use the explanation that the mist is covering up the sun and it's creating a lot of shade and it's dark. But how much mist is there exactly? Because one gust of wind and the sun could come back through. We know what clouds are like. They can move very quickly. And I'm not going to try and think about it too deeply because otherwise I would find a plot hole. So I'm just going to be ignorant to that. Let's talk about the E and G smooch. So Elrond and Galadriel have a kiss which felt very unnecessary. He's basically acted like he's hated her this entire season, so I'm not sure why he would then kiss her. Typical guy giving mixed messages. I mean, he definitely did that to distract the orcs because he did give her something that was gonna help her escape. I'm pretty sure it was to unlock her chains. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he definitely gave her something that was gonna help her. But the kiss, man, the kiss, why not a hug? I don't understand why he needed to give her a big ol' smooch. It felt unnecessary to me, it felt not needed. That's what unnecessary means. Why did I feel the need to say that? We've had a lot of very weird people smooching each other in this season. We had Poppy and Nobody, we've got Elrond and Galadriel. Who's it gonna be next, Adar and an Orc? We then get a very inspirational speech from Prince Durin. And then we get a really cool war scene, but there is a sad moment where Elrond's horse dies. That was the saddest part of the episode for me. And somehow in the middle of all this fighting and this war and this chaos, Elrond manages to find time to console his horse and sit down next to it and give it a little stroke before going back into the battle again. Surely any orc nearby would have seen that as an opportunity to kill him. But that didn't happen because of a wonderful thing called plot armor. It's made of the finest materials. Does anyone else think that the orc's voices are really cute or is that just me? Probably just me. 
In this episode, we do learn that Adar has feelings and can express love. He tells the orcs that he loves them too much for them to become Sauron's slaves, and he sheds a tear. Cute. It's a shame that Arondir hasn't had much screen time in this season at all, but at least he was important in this episode because he saved Galadriel from being killed. She was none the wiser to the fact that some orcs were creeping up on her and Arondir fires a couple of arrows, boom, boom, and she's saved. Now, I did have a bad sense when I saw Arondir. I was thinking, why is he back in this again? He hasn't been in this season for a few episodes. I got a bad sense of foreboding coming on. Where is his plot leading him? Not very far, we later find out. We get an emotional scene between Sauron and Celebrimbor. Sauron mentions that he has different motives and approaches to Morgoth, saying something along the lines of, what Morgoth means to destroy, I mean to perfect. And Celebrimbor tries to destroy the Nine Rings by throwing them into the fire. They ain't affected by that. And then Celebrimbor takes a whole lot of pain like a champ, he cuts his finger off. You gotta do what you gotta do. Celebrimbor has been blasted by fireballs and fallen over too many times in this episode. It happens again. Just unfortunate timing. Let's be honest, the poor bloke has been absolutely traumatised at this point. He does speak to Galadriel again though, she tries to stop the rest of the squad from harassing him. In this moment, I just wanted to shake him, like why are you not telling Galadriel who Anatar truly is? Like she would get it, she'd understand. She's been after Sauron this whole time, just tell her. We then see a random archer elf die. We have no connection to this person and therefore I felt no emotion, but we had a pretty lengthy scene of them dying anyway. Because why not? Guess who's back? Back again, the big old troll, tell your friend. It's Damrod, he comes marching through the trees. He's stepping on people, he's crushing people, he's throwing people around. Meanwhile, has Celebrimbor sought any medical attention for his missing finger? That's gotta hurt. Does anyone else think that Damrod the Hill Giant died too quickly? It seemed like it took no time at all for him to die. And let's be honest, he's big, he's OP, he is strong. It just felt like he died really quickly. And I actually had a connection to him. When I first saw him all those episodes ago, I just felt something for him. I just didn't want him to die. Oh my God, when Elrond looks at the hill and exclaims, the dwarves are coming, and then the dwarves don't come. You can't make this stuff up. Has Durin stood them up? So like I said, some of the characters have a lot of plot armor and we know that because we do see them in Lord of the Rings and therefore we know they're not gonna die. Do you know who doesn't have plot armor though? Arondir. And I called that something was gonna happen to him, which it does. If he ends up dying, which I'm pretty sure he will do and he should do because did you see where he got stabbed? If he ends up dying, I will officially launch a complaint because I really liked that character and I feel like all the characters I like are dying. Arondir, Damrod, the horse. And then the episode ends with Adar gaining Galadriel's ring. Ooh. And then on the end credits, we get some random screamer orc music. Again, vibing, but I just don't quite understand. And that is the episode in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed my really insightful review that gave you a lot of information around the lore and was a very serious review of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. There is only one episode left. So you'll be glad to hear that there is only one more review from me on Rings of Power and then I never want to talk about this show again. But I'm going to say it again, I've enjoyed it. I am who I am, I like what I like. As always, I do actually want to hear your opinions on the show. They will be different to mine, I can guarantee. But if they're not, please let me know so I don't feel so alone. Please make sure to leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this episode. And thank you very much for watching this video, I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know. If you like my content and you want to see more from me, then please subscribe because it's free and it means that you can see my videos easier. I will see you next week for the next episode of Rings of Power and I will also be uploading a midweek video about something else entirely, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you next time, or rather you'll see me, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.